Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Ben and of course this little dude is Milo, our newest adventure buddy. He is growing so quickly and getting ready for his very first overnight camping trip, which we will be sure to share with you guys. But today he's in the shop and he's going to help us with this install. We're finally going to throw the snorkel onto the Forerunner. Uh, for me, installs usually fall into one of two categories. Either the parts come in the mail and I'm so excited to throw them on, I just drop everything and do it, whether or not I have all the parts available. Or uh, in the case of the snorkel, the parts come in the mail and for one reason or another, they get put into the corner and put off for months and months on end. But I figured since I spent a few hours yesterday finishing up an oil change and putting a new air filter uh, in the Forerunner, now's as good a time as any to finally bite the bullet, put some pretty big holes in my fender, and get the snorkel installed. So, let's get right to it. What do you say, buddy? Yeah? All right, like I mentioned, we're installing this Dobinson's 4x4 snorkel today. It should be a pretty straightforward install. If you do run into any issues, Dobinson's includes this awesome instruction manual with full color pictures inside, but we shouldn't be needing that. The one important piece of paper that does come in the box though is this, our drill template. We will line this up on the fender, uh, something like that, and we will mark and drill the holes for mounting the snorkel as well as the big one the actual hole to pass through the snorkel into the engine bay, uh, which, I don't know, maybe we'll pull out the angle grinder, or maybe we'll do it with a cutoff disc on the Dremel. Let's see what we're feeling like when we get there. Uh, also in the box, of course, is a bag of hardware. This has some hose clamps, some nuts and bolts, uh, and the bracket and pop rivets for the A-pillar. This is another place where I'm not totally sure what I'm gonna do, uh, if I'm being quite honest. The instruction manual would lead you to believe that you should drill holes, pop rivet the bracket into the A-pillar, and then bolt that to the snorkel itself. My gut tells me, though, that it's probably a little more work than we're trying to do today, and uh, we should be fine just to use some 3M double-sided tape VHB here. Very high bond, and uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if I'm feeling motivated enough to, to get after that bracket. You've of course got the head uh, that sits up top after the install's done, holds on with one of the hose clamps there. Uh, you've also got this rubber boot that connects the snorkel to the air box in the engine bay. And uh, that's pretty much that. All right, let's quickly talk tools uh, that we'll need for this install. It's a fairly short list uh, and fairly straightforward. The first thing is a couple of screwdrivers, flathead Phillips head. It'll make quick work of the hose clamps and probably also help with some of the prep work of that front passenger wheel well area. To actually install the studs for the snorkel, you're gonna need an M4 hex key. To install the nuts on the backside, you'll want a 13 millimeter wrench. Once we've got our template up, uh, before we drill, you're probably gonna wanna center punch those holes. I would highly recommend it anyways, so we've got a center punch for that. We've got some pilot drill bits and some step bits to uh, make the mounting holes for those studs. And for the big one, for the Mac Daddy hole that we've got to put in the fender here, I'm gonna use a Dremel. There's a million ways you could do this, I'm sure. I know it's pretty popular for folks to do it just with their drill and a hole saw. I'm not a big fan of the hole saw just because it's a curved surface and one wrong move, you catch a tooth, you go skipping all the way across your fender. You could also pull out the angle grinder. I'm just going with the Dremel because the hole's only about yay big and uh, we might be able to finesse a little bit better with the Dremel. We can also throw that sanding uh, attachment on here at the end, clean up all the holes, so I think that'll be really nice. We've got some blue painter's tape holding the template in place and protecting the rest of the fender from getting all dinged up. And what may be the controversial piece of this install, the 3M VHB that I'm gonna try to secure it to the A-pillar with. Only time is gonna tell if I'm a total idiot thinking that I can do it this way. We'll find out when we get to that portion of the install, I guess. If we have to revise our plan and go back and drill those holes and pop those rivets into place, it's not gonna be that big of a loss, but I think it's worth it to try the VHB because I've got faith in it. So at this point, we've got our parts for our install laid out and our tools at hand, but before we get going, I wanted to answer the question that's on top of everyone's mind, which is, why a snorkel? 
And to be honest, I feel like a snorkel is a fairly polarizing install for your rig. There's this camp of folks that just hate them. They think they're stupid and ugly. And if you're fording water that deep, you're an idiot. And then there's this camp that loves them and thinks they're aesthetically pleasing and they look cool. And there actually is some functionality besides fording windshield high rivers. So I definitely fall into that second camp of folks. I think it's a combination of form and function. I personally think snorkels look cool and we all know that rigs that look cooler perform at least 10 times better on harder trails. I also think that there is some functionality there that I can benefit from. I'm not delusional. I don't think that I'm going to be fording rivers and doing water crossings that are up to my windshield or over my roof. I'm not trying to build an amphibious assault vehicle and storm some beaches. All I'm trying to do here is make my air filter last longer and make my rig look cooler. I do a lot of wheeling in dusty environments and the stock air intake for the Forerunner up in that passenger wheel well is just where I'm kicking up all this dust and dirt and grime. So to elevate that and be able to provide the engine with cooler, cleaner air is uh, an exciting possibility for me. Uh, again, uh, that is a tempered expectation though. I'm not delusional. Uh, this has nothing to do with increasing engine performance. We're not ramming more air into the engine and gaining horsepower. We're not delivering more oxygen to the engine and gaining horsepower. Oxygen, of course, is a function of elevation. These rumors sort of float around online in terms of should you install a snorkel or not, but they're bunk, they're myths. Uh, you, don't, you don't really gain that much, but you get cooler, cleaner air. And that is important for me because of where I like to take trips to. So with that said, let's get into it.
snorkel installed and it's time to treat ourselves to a beer. Well, there you have it. That's the install of this Dobbinson's 4x4 snorkel on my 5th Gen 4Runner. It's fairly straightforward, but you'll probably notice that I called a few audibles during it. I mentioned that we were gonna use the Dremel to cut out that big hole, and I ended up pulling out the angle grinder just to make quick work of it. I still did use the Dremel to finish off all my holes, uh, deburr everything, and that came in handy. What I did end up sticking with though is the 3M VHB, that double-sided tape on the A-pillar, instead of drilling and riveting this bracket into place. We'll see how it holds up. As luck would have it, we're heading out first thing in the morning for Milo's first camping trip, and that'll be a good chance to just see how it holds up to a couple hours of highway driving, a couple hours of off-roading, and you guys will be the first to know. I'm probably gonna pack more double-sided tape for this trip just in case things go awry, but as I got the snorkel fitted and looked at the contact area of that A-pillar, I felt good about using VHB I felt like there was enough room for, for adhesion and for things to really stick, so we'll see how it goes. So, fresh air filter is as good as time of any. So, a fresh air filter is as good a time as any. Is as good of a time as any. <laughs> so, I figured with fresh air filters in there, it's as good as a time of any. It's as good of a time as any. <laughs>